Yeah, let's go. I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. Today's training, I've got a presentation that I want to go over. And it's basically going to be going over, you know, I asked you guys what you wanted to learn. I'm really stoked that we reached the 2000 member mark in here. And I know I haven't been as active as I usually am. So I decided I need to give away a free training, get you guys back on here and make sure you know that I'm still alive. I'm still here. So more trainings are going to be coming more often. But today's training. What's up, Sean, Christopher, Mr. Grant, Brian. Appreciate you guys being on here. Today's training. You guys asked, so I'm going to deliver, right? You guys wanted to know how to close deals. And more importantly, I wrote down some specific questions that you guys have. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pull up my screen over here. And today's topic, how to close a $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 SMMA deal. Um, I'm going to go over one specific strategy that is responsible for you know, how you close these deals. It's, and I, I do want to put that out. There's not one thing that will make or break a deal, but this one thing, if you don't have it, it's going to be very hard to close deals going forward. Hashtag screen, hashtag screen. What's up, Josh? What's up, Brian? Okay. So I'm going to be looking at my phone over here. If you guys have any comments, it's a little delayed, but go ahead and drop them down here. So today, how to close a thousand dollar SMMA deal. Right. And it all comes down to one piece of one one thing that you have to have in place in order to even put yourself in the position to close these high ticket deals. And that is framing. Right. Frames are the mental structures that shape the way people see the world. The frame based approach in business is a very straightforward and it does not require a lot of those, you know, salesy techniques, the tactics or like that smooth talk. You don't have to go out there and get a new haircut like I just did today to do this framing aspect. The frame is how you package your power, your authority, your strength, your information, and your status. So in a nutshell, framing refers to properly positioning messages you are sending to your buyer in order to tell a story, creates context, which in turn influences the way people think and buy. So just to reiterate that framing is basically how you're going to position yourself and your story and your, and your pitch to sell to your prospect. So why is framing important? A successful pitch depends on your ability to build strong frames. Think about it. If you go in there and your frames are weak, you'll come off as somebody they cannot trust. And if you go into a meeting very shy, very timid, and the, the business owner, just if he doesn't trust you and thinks like, whoa, this is a little kid that's trying to pitch me a $3,000 package, why the fuck should I buy from him? That's, that's one of the issues that I faced when I first started my sales, um, my sales career. I'd go into these businesses and pitch them thousand dollar packages. And I was just like, I was just a little college frat kid that had no idea what I was doing, but I was going in there and I learned these steps as I went. And I, I'll tell you a quick little story. One of these stories, all right, one of these stories, I went into this pizza place, right, to sell them, I think it was like an $800 a month contract. And keep in mind, this contract I was selling, it was for a 12 month contract. So 800 times 12, it's a pretty big chunk of investment for a pizza company to invest into a college frat kid. So I went in there and, you know, I started off the frame, right? I, I put my feet down, you know, I, I established myself as authority in the meeting at first. It's like, I'm going to structure this meeting by kind of going over, asking you some questions. And then if we think, if I sound like we're a good fit, we'll go from there. So I did that. And as soon as I did that, I put my presentation cards on the table. And <laughs> I learned this very quickly. There was three guys in this meeting. They were all probably 10 to 20 to 30 years older than me. So they, you know, they're experienced with salespeople like myself. As soon as I put these cards on the table, you guys, I swear, these guys were like fucking sharks. They were going there, taking my presentation, going through it. And as soon as I did that, I lost all my framework. I lost being the authority. I lost everything. So as soon as I did that, I lost the meeting. I knew it. But Valuable lesson from this. One, you got to establish that framework and you got to keep it throughout the whole meeting. Two, never play, show your whole cards. You know, putting those cards down there, my, we had at the time is a little presentation thing. Um, and I put them down on the table and I swear it was, 
looking back on it, it's kind of funny now because they knew exactly what to do. They just took them, started reading through all of them, and it, it, it ruined the whole pitch. So two things to remember. Keep your frame in order. Don't go in there with a weak frame. Got to be very solid. And two, never show your cards up front. <laughs> Joe's laughing at that. Joe, you, Joe was my coach at this time, so he probably knows exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, um, on to the next one. So how do you frame, right? There's a couple ways you do this. You need to take control of the conversation, right? Like kind of I was talking about in that pizza story. You do this by explaining what you're going to do and then going from there. So the way I like to do these, I do a lot of all my calls right now. I close on video. So I do this by getting them on the video call. And I say, the first thing I say, I have like 30 seconds worth of small talk, right? And then I go in there and say, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to ask you some questions. And if it sounds like we're a good fit, we'll go from there. And then just right there, you're already taking the frame of the conversation. You're putting yourself as the authority. So it makes them think, well, shit, I want to be a good fit for him. So I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to cooperate and I'm going to listen to what he says. And once you do that, you just have to take the frame throughout the whole rest of the conversation. And you just do that by basically going down your script. So the next thing, um, I, I talked to a lot of people inside this group, and they talked about how um, they get a, they get to the price part and they struggle. So when it comes to framing, like I said, the whole point of this is you've got to be the boss. You've got to be the authority, right? And the way to do this is you've got to talk. Like when you're about to sell, when you're pitching the price, you can't go in there like a timid little bitch. I'm sorry to say it. If I offend anyone, I'm really sorry. Actually, I'm really not sorry because if, if I offend you, you probably shouldn't be in this group. You can't go into a conversation like a little bitch, right? You have to go in there like you're the authority. When you present price, fucking tell them the price. Don't be Tim, be like, well, it's going to be $1,000 a month and then this and this. No, it doesn't work like that. you got to go in there and be like, okay, well, you know, we usually charge $2,000, but today we have incentive-based pricing. So if you get enrolled today, we'll give, give you $500 off. We'll, and we'll get you set up for $1,500. You see, there's a difference between being very timid and being very upfront and having that authority. And once you get to the point where you have the authority, you'll be able to sell so much more. And I do want to point this out. It is not something that you're going to get just like that. The way I was able to stru start structuring my frames and closing more deals is simply from just going into a shit ton of meetings. You guys can ask Joe. He's on this call right now. He was the one that was, when I first started in sales at Odyssey, right? He was the one that would make me go out there and prospect all day long. Thanks for that, Joe. And I would like, I would not, I would have to set five to 10 meetings every single week or else I wouldn't get paid. So it all comes with practice. And a great way with this is if you are timid, if you are one of those guys that are like, you know, I'm not very outgoing, I'm a little shy. I want to tell you, it's perfectly okay. Not everybody is perfect at sales, but you can learn. So my suggestion for you, if you're timid, start out with running some trials. You know, I mean, if you've never sold a $1,500 package to somebody and you just go in straight for the kill, you're not, you're probably not going to sell a package right up front, right? Like, let's just be honest. One, you, you need the authority to do it. So the more packages you close, the more likeliness that you're going to have the experience to close. So if you've never closed the package and you're timid, or if you never closed the deal, let's just say that, and you're a little timid, you're a little shy, go out there and start out with trials. Go out there and start off with discounts and start building your way up. You know, this is what I did. I went out there and the first deal I signed, it was like, um, I don't know, like a $300 deal. This was back at Odyssey. A $300 deal was like a 12 month deal, but it, I started bringing myself up. After I left Odyssey, I came, started my own agency and I was able, the first package I pitched was a $1,000 package, a $2,000 package. And then I went up to a $3,500 package. It doesn't just come like that. You have to like build yourself up like a ste like steps. That's the best way I can think about it. So the next thing is, and this is more of a um, kind of like I said, if you're a little bit more experienced type deal, this works extremely well when you're going in for the close. Make the prospect know that they are lucky to be working with you. Again, this is a little bit more um, on the professional side. If you're just getting started in sales, it's going to be a little bit harder to do, but always keep this in your mind and like play this in there. A good book for this, I should have wrote this down in here. It's called Pitch Anything. I'm reading it right now and they talk about this as well. But um, do it at the beginning of the call. Just be like, hey, I've got some questions for you. And if all, if everything sounds good 
And well, if everything sounds good and you seem like a good fit, we'll work together. If not, no big deal. Just by doing that, you know, you tell them like, hey, we're picky who we work with. So let me go to this next one and get a quick little drink. So the ways to frame, there are four, four, four ways to frame. And that is emotion, vision, ownership, and final outcome, right? You always got to appeal to emotion if you want to sell. Emotion makes the prospect feel the emotion of the outcome. Example would be like, you know, happy to have the time freedom. Like you got to dive in deep on what their pain points are. Let's say a chiropractor was saying, told me the other day he wanted more time freedom. I was like, okay, perfect. Let's dive in on that emotion. We'll help you out. Next one is vision. You need to make the prospect visually see the outcome if you guys decide to work together. Be like, so what will it work like? What will it look like after we start bringing you 30 new patient opportunities each month? You know, how much more time freedom are you going to have? Who will this impact? Will you have more time with your family? Oh, what do you want? What are you going to do? You want to go sail the world? Okay, awesome. Well, we're going to do the back end stuff to make sure that your dreams, your visions come true. Next is ownership. What's it going to be like if they start working with you? And this one's huge because ownership makes the buyer feel like they're a part of the process. So really dive in deep on that. Now, the last one is final outcome. So you got the emotion, you got the vision, and you got the ownership. They all must be anchored into the outcome. So make sure your frame is anchored to the outcome and just really dive in deep on what the end results are going to be. So you guys see how all this plays together? You got your emotion, vision, outcome, and then it all ties in with your final ownership, and then it all ties in with your final outcome. So again, like I said, I did a survey, I asked you guys a bunch of questions, and one of the questions um, that a lot of people struggled with, and I'll get to more of those here in a second, was objections, right? Objections, I want to tell you right now, objections are a good thing. Trust me, if you're not getting any objections, Either one, you're getting really fucking lucky, or two, they're just not going to buy from you. So objections mean the buyer is engaged and they have something to pay attention to. Think about it. They're asking questions. They're saying engage with you. That's good because that means you got their attention. Number two, you can really take advantage of this opportunity to even to add even more value. They ask a question about this. Okay, well, you go in and you talk more about it. That's why it's really, really important to know all of your shit. And if you don't know it, I mean, there's there's YouTube, there's videos, there's groups like this right now where it's your chance to come on here, ask any questions that you don't know, um, learn new things. You guys got to take advantage of all the free opportunities out in the world. Now, the last one is, you know, like I said, objections are good. The last one is you'll be able to tell if the buyer is actually qualified. And by doing this, you know, you, you can ask them questions as well and to really dive in deep to see what it is in their business that they need help with. So, like I said, here's a cool thing. Um, every objection you're hearing now is nothing new. I'm going to say that again. Everything you're hearing now in sales is nothing new. Everyone's heard it, and there are thousands of books, online sources, sales reps, people like me that can help out. Now, I'm not saying by any means I'm a guru in this space, an expert in this space. space. No, hell no. I'm, I'm constantly learning and investing in myself every single day, like I encourage everybody out, out here to do as well. But the cool thing is, like, if you hear an objection, it's not the end of the world. You can simply just go online, go on Google and just type in how to handle X objection. Or you can just go out there and invest in yourself into, like, some courses or into books. And three books I have down here that I recommend for you guys are The Little Red Book of Selling. I think I actually have that. <laughs> of course I have that. Little Red Book of Selling. This thing is gold. Check this out. I mean, I swear, this thing is literally like my Bible. So if you're struggling with sales, that or you're struggling with sales or you're just a beginner, I highly, highly, highly suggest the little red book of selling. Um, of, se of selling, yeah. It's it's one that's changed my life and it's made me quite a bit of money as well. So um, the next one is Zero Resistance. That's also a great book to brush up on some skills. And then Sandler's Rules. Excuse me one second. I like Sandler's rules because it's really straightforward. It's kind of like a little red book of selling. You go in there and there's like, I think it's Sandler's 47 rules, I think. And it's like 47 chapters that are like a couple pages long. And you just bookmark what you want to learn. 
So again, if you're having issues, go out there and learn it. You're not gonna just do it and then be like, okay, well, next time let's go in here and try something different. Like, learn it before you do it. Like, once you fail, learn it. And a little pro tip, a good way for you guys to get better at sales objections, keep a stack of note cards by you at all times. And every time you're on the call and you hear a certain objection, write it down on that note card. And eventually you'll have a stack of note cards. You'll be like, oh, you know what? I've heard this objection. Let me flip to this note card. How do I handle this? You say it, boom, put that objection in the um, next stack. You've handled it. Now you're onto the next one and the next one. And then eventually you just sell them. So questions. These are the questions. Um, if you guys are, if you guys have saw the post earlier, I made a post, I think it was on Monday. I'm gonna start doing this more often. And I'm going to ask what questions you guys have and any questions that um, are commented, I'm gonna go over them inside these presentations weekly. So one of the questions was um, how to handle price objections. So to answer this, there's no such thing as a price objection. Price is not an objection. If they're telling you it's too expensive, it really means something else. And any business owner, I mean, think about it guys, like any business owner can go out and take a quick loan Find some way to afford your service if they actually really need it. I want you to think about this. Now, it might be a little, a little extreme, but we'll just, we'll just go to the point. Like you're really sick, right? Like you're really fucking sick in the hospital, right? You're at that point where you know, you know, there's something out there that's going to fix you. You just want the doctor to come here and give it to you. Think, take that approach when you're selling to business owners. You're the doctor, right? They need what you have. As long as you have a good service in place, they need what you have. So make it your duty and obligation to give it to them. And if you have what they need, it should be a no brainer for them. So most of the time, if they're saying it's too expensive, it really means basically two things. One, they don't trust you, which if they don't trust you, then you gotta, you gotta redo all this. It all comes down to framing. If you frame the meeting right, then they will trust you. But if they don't trust you, you're shit out of luck because no one's gonna buy from you if they don't trust you. So reframe it if they don't trust you and learn from that experience. The next one is they don't simply trust your process, which that's not a make or break because you can go back there and you know answer any more questions they have, any more objections they have. So to answer this question in a nutshell, sell value and then the price will come naturally. So the next question I got from you guys was how to follow up. Now, there's a lot of ways to follow up on here. And the three methods that I personally teach are the power follow-up, the first 48, and the double follow-up. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail of this for you guys simply because this is just inside the course. And some of this stuff needs to be for the members that pay for it. So in a nutshell, you need to be keeping a CRM. And if you guys don't know what a CRM is, it's a customer relation management and have at least five follow-ups in there. So it's basically a way that you can go be like, okay, hey, I talked to John today. He, um, he's not interested right now, okay? You put John down, put his information down, and then you'll have like a CRM saying when to follow up. So you have five follow-up touches, right? You need to make sure you actually follow up. So um, when you follow up, just keep the conversation short. You know, be like, hey, John, just checking in. You know, we talked the other day, just following up with you and just keep doing it, you know? You're not gonna annoy them. I mean, just get to the point where if they, if they just tell them, like I've gotten to the point with a lot of my clients and actually, so I signed one of my clients this way, honestly, because it was after the, the seventh follow-up. I'm not going to say his name, but I was like, Hey John, you know, I've been following up with you for a little bit here. You showed some interest earlier. Um, just wanted to follow up. Let me know if I'm annoying you here. You know, you got to have a little bit of sense of humor when you're doing this. And he's like, Oh no, no, I'm just a very busy person. Glad you're staying in touch. Glad you're following up. Let's get on the phone signed them like that you guys like business owners are super fucking busy as are we like think about it put yourself in their shoes they need to be followed up with all right so um i did want to leave you with this the crm and follow-up scripts are provided in the prospecting like a pro course you know i always got to stay plugged i'm not going to go into too much detail on that but if you guys want prospecting like a pro get it before price goes up shoot me a dm um okay another question was how to get clients without any case studies. We got a couple different options here. One, the easiest option. If you don't have any case studies, it probably means you don't have any results, right? It's kind of hard to sell a 
package when you don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? I mean, unless you have a fulfillment team, it's a little different, but let's just say, for example, if you, if you don't have any results, run a trial. It's super easy to get a trial client and it's super easy to get case studies and, tri and testimonies from that as well. And also, I actually signed three of my first trials, so don't sleep on trials. Everybody out here says, oh, don't do trials, don't do yourself for free. No, that's bullshit. Like, if you don't know what you're doing, do a trial. Make the client pay for the ad spend. You get the results. You create a case study out of it, and then you upsell. Then you sell them at the end, and then get a testimony, and then use their referrals. Like, it's it's a no brainer. I don't understand why people don't do it. But I mean, then again, if you guys are a little bit more experienced, and you probably don't need to run a trial, right? Anyways, number two is hire a fulfillment team and use their case studies as part of your agency. So. This is um, a great way to get case studies if you don't have any. But again, if you're going to hire the fulfillment team, make sure that you know their results are real. Um, I've talked to some people before that they sent me fake results. I've actually had people go out there and use my results and try to sell me on my results. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. But that's why if you guys go through my profile or anything, you'll notice that all my all my results have my branding on them now, just because. People, people are scumbags. Like, let's just be honest. Like, people out in this world are scumbags. It's how life is. You just got to dodge the bullets, right? Anyways, number three, sell them on their pain point. If you can dive deep enough, if you can dive deep enough and explain how you will fix their problem, there's no case study needed, right? You have a solution for them. Again, remember, this is key. You have a solution. If your product works, you know what you're doing. You have that solution. Sell them on that. There's no reason they shouldn't buy from you. Grant Cardone talks about this a lot. I think it's what's been kind of instilled in my brain is it's your duty, responsibility, and obligation to help someone out if you have what they need. That's why his sales teams are so like crazy with follow-up and stuff like that because they know that what they have works. The next one, next question I got is how to come up with offer for your clients. Um, this is an easy one. You can use Groupon or you can use competitors. I always like to use Groupon just because if you go on there, you can find out what's already working, um, how many people already bought that specific offer. And then you can just use your competitors. You can go through Facebook and if you go to a competitor's um, Facebook page, there's a section on the left that says info and ads. Just click on that and see what they're running. Again, you got to make sure their competitors know what they're doing, but it's an easy way. Uh, I think we're getting to our last questions here. So how to explain to a client that a monthly retainer is necessary. Okay. So my first piece of advice for this is do everything under your own account. Um, I've never had issues with this, but I've have some buddies that they say they go out there and they, let's say you're doing Facebook ads. They go out there and do Facebook ads for somebody and they put it under the client's account and the client's a little bit experienced with, Facebook marketing. So they went in there and kicked my buddy out and started running their ads themselves. Um, it actually didn't perform nearly as well. So again, if they want to do that, that's all up to them. They'll end up probably losing money, but um, make sure you do everything under your own account. Um, one, just a little side note on this, and I won't go into too much detail on this right now. It's going to be, it's going to be covered pretty heavily in my course, but um, credit, like if you put these business accounts on your card, your own credit card, and you're spending $500 a month, you guys, like you can literally just travel for free from this type of stuff. Um, my, my roommate's like a credit expert, so I'm getting him featured inside my course as well. Um, so I'm really excited for that, for everybody that's in there, because like I said, you're going to be traveling for free or getting points back. So um, back to kind of what we were talking about, you need to be the doctor. Tell them what they need to do, and then play your part and solve the problem. Be like, look, if they're arguing with you on, if they're arguing on you with being a monthly retainer, like, look, like, I know what I'm doing here. If you don't want to do a monthly retainer, that's fine. You can give me $1,500 this month, but you're going to end up losing money in the long run because I need to stay here and manage everything. You guys, I'm telling you, take the doctor approach when selling. You're the doctor. You got the goods. You got the sauce. You got what they need, provide it to them. So my go-to line for this is, hey, look, Mr. Business Owner, the reason you need to pay me monthly is simply because technology is constantly changing and problems occur all the time. 
I mean, shit, just yesterday, Facebook's algorithm, new algorithm, Facebook just had a new algorithm, which, um, I mean, it, it seems like they have a new algorithm update like every single week. I swear to God, like, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys on here are noticing that as well. It's always something new with these platforms, whether you're in Google AdWords, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, I know Instagram, for example, they literally just updated everything. So let's go in some real life examples. And then you go, you need to stay on top of the type of things. You need to stay on top of these type of things while, well, sorry, you need someone to stay on top of these type of things while you focus on what's really important and that's growing your business. So I want to leave this last, um, these last couple of minutes to open up for you guys. Let me know any questions you have and I will get those answered. I'll go through here, drop any questions you have. Um, and if you guys like this, give me a hashtag value down below. This is the first time I've opened um, a little PowerPoint presentation like this. So I know my computer is a little delayed. So let me pull, or my phone's a little delayed. Let's see. Dean says, get them saying yes. Agree, Dean. You want to get them saying yes as much as possible at first. <laughs> Joe says, buy the book. Yeah, he's not lying, guys. That book is amazing. Where can I find the slides? Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. If you guys want these slides, give me give me a hashtag slides down below and um, I'll get them um, sent over to you. I wasn't even thinking about doing that, but fuck it. Why not? You know, <laughs> I want to help you out. So hashtag slides if you want these. Um, any good CRM recommendations? Great question. So I, I str I'm a very organized type of person, right? Let me, let me get back to my normal screen. Okay. I'm back. What's up, guys? <laughs> All right. So to answer your question about um, any good CRM recommendations, I am a very, very organized person. So little tiny details drive me insane. Like when these certain programs don't work like I want them to, um, I always have to figure out a different way to do it. To answer your question, I would say either Zilla or not Zilla. Wow. Either Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O is pretty solid. Um, I think active campaign has a pretty good one in there as well. You have to pay for it. You have to pay like a, you have to have the higher end package for active campaign because that's an email marketing website. But, um, there was another one I tried out I'm trying to think of what the name is called. Um, I don't know, but I ended up creating my own CRM through Google sheets. Again, that's also plugged inside the course. So you guys get in the course. It's super cheap right now. The price is only going up to, I'm about to drop three, about to actually drop four more videos I just recorded today. Um, we've had some crazy results. I've been waiting to release the testimonies. I'll do that this week as well. But again, this training is not to promote the course. I just wanted to um, tell you guys inside there. <laughs> Let's see. So much value. Slides, please. Got you. Got you. Yeah, you guys. Pipe drive. Okay. Thanks, Joe. That's That was a good one. Pipe drive. Um, Pipe drive was pretty solid. It worked pretty well for me. Like I said, there's little tiny details that I don't like. So I went out and created my own through Google Sheets. It's um, It works for me, but um, I think that's about it for this, you guys. I've got some pretty big stuff coming up this week as well. I got an interview with for, for you guys in here with um, one of my good buddies. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, but he runs a chatbot agency and he one sells chatbots for like two grand and then keeps them on a monthly retainer. So if you guys want to see that video, make sure to turn on notifications in this group because I'm going to be making an announcement on that here shortly. HubSpot is a good free, simple one too. HubSpot's pretty solid. Um, last question. I'll take it from Christopher. What's the best prospecting method? Great question, Christopher. So I, I've done... I've done the cold calling, cold sales. Wow, cold calling, cold emailing, door to door sales, right? Everything's cold calling in a way. But the way I found better results, better success for me, myself, my agency is through prospecting online. Now, I teach, I teach specifically the Facebook method just because that's worked extremely well for me. It's worked extremely well for some of my clients as well. 
Um, Rocco the other day, I just implemented the sniping method, which that's really cool. I might have to release that to you guys here in the future. Um, maybe, maybe. But he just did the sniping method and through Facebook, he landed three meetings and closed a $1,500 deal just like that, like literally 10 minutes after I released it. So don't sleep on Facebook. It's a great way to prospect. Um, I would say when you're prospecting on Facebook, definitely do video messages. It's, um, it's, it's, I mean, you gotta be, a, the whole point is you gotta be a real human being, right? Anyone can just go online and message a hundred people, but get your face in front of them, make them realize you're a real person. So, um, that's going to wrap up this training for you guys today. Again, if you want these, um, slides, give me a hashtag slides down below. And also thank you so much for being on here. If you like this video, give me a hashtag value and please hit that like and heart button down there. Um, I got to go. I got to go hop on a couple more calls, but it's been fun. We're going to start implementing these more often. We'll catch you guys later.